some things on me and it was this first one is is a question and is it do you want to be prophetic that's the the answer just raise your hand okay i'm in in a good crowd now for some of you that don't know what prophetic is there's a simple definition it's listening to the holy spirit and obeying what he tells you to do. That's all the prophetic is. Prophetic is a long word, but that's all it means. You, you're listening to the Holy Spirit, and you follow what he wants you to do. Now now tell me, everyone wants to be prophetic? Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, you know, sometimes in Christian ease, we say things that... Yeah, that'd be good. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, baby. So, with sometimes our Christian ease, we, we kind of lose people, right? Mm -hmm. Especially people who are not in the church. We'll be blowing this and blowing that, and, and before you know it, they're like, who is this guy? From a different planet. Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> and, and it's okay to do that amongst your, your group. Which, which the Lord kind of impressed on me, um, the book of Ecclesiastes. And I was looking up the definition of Ecclesiastes. I said, what does that mean? You know, And it, it means to convene a group together or an assembly together. And uh, yeah, the ecclesia is the, the group of believers that are actively meeting together in, in Christ's name. So it's interesting. It's, a, it's Old Testament, it's New Testament, right? And um, it, it was interesting that, that God was using this venue and this ministry to gather people together. And so he has done. And it's like every time I come, it's a few more, a few more, and we definitely want more, right? Just like we prayed, God, we, we need more. In fact, every every song that Pierre selected ha has a different sermon. You could just start right there and preach a whole sermon on every one of those songs. And I know each one of you were touched, especially by one that might have really, you know, touched you um, in a deep way. And that's what worship is. Worship is, is getting in tune with the Father. And as we were worshiping, I saw the heart of the Father here Amen. in our midst. Amen. And, and just like Pierre was talking about compassion, I was feeling the compassion of the Father Amen. for each one of you. That, that God wooed you in here, and He's letting you know that He loves you, and He cares for you, Amen. and He wants a great future, Jeremiah 29, 11. He wants that over you. He wants you to embrace his call and his destiny in your life, what you were created to do, and then fulfill it. But you're not going to be able to do it without being prophetic. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I believe, even as I will prophesy to hopefully most of you, if not all, and in the process of doing that, you will catch a little more of the prophetic in your life. Amen. Uh, I remember Dr. Bill Hammond, who's kind of one of my mentors. He he had a young minister that you know was baptized in the Holy Spirit, but he couldn't prophesy. He just couldn't get anything. And he says, "Come over here and just stand next to me." And he stood next to him on all the the services that Bill Hammond was doing. And when he would prophesy. He'd say, you get anything? And he'd say, no. And so they did like three meetings. And he just said no every time. And then it was like towards the end of that next meeting, there was like ten more people. And he said, did you get anything? He goes, yeah. And he started sharing what he gets. He goes, well, tell that guy, what, is he, what does God want for him? And he, told, and he prophesied to all the other ten mm -hmm. that were there in line. So, you know, we say a lot of times in, in, in the, the ministry, some things are better caught 
been taught. And it's true, even in Toronto's revival, there were strange things happening, but there was a reason for it. It was like God was offending our mind to get to our heart. You know, some of us have figured it out. We know everything. And we just want God to bless us. And and unfortunately, pride comes in there. And, and there's not a lot of good things about pride in the Bible. So we need to lean into the into the, the leading of the Holy Spirit every day of our life. And that's why I love full gospel. It, it's, it emphasizes all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and especially like we were praying in tongues earlier, if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues, you need to get someone in here to pray for you and with you. So because it's, it's very difficult to get all the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 flowing in your life without being baptized in the Holy Spirit first. I know my brother here, so he mentioned how he got the gift of prophecy before he ever got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe you didn't have tongues yet, but you were probably baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, there's an evidence of that, and one is tongues, right? Another one is testifying of Jesus to other people. <laughs> Because he said in Acts, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be witnesses in all the world, right? So that's an evidence that the Holy Spirit has baptized you, right? He has come upon you in such a way that he is now leading you and guiding you. And some people, you know, they, they argue whether Billy Graham was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, I can tell you he was. I never heard him speak in tongues. But I saw him do things that no question the Holy Spirit was upon him and in him. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, it, you know, some of us, we try to do one, two, three, like the four spiritual laws. But when God goes outside the box and does some things, it's like, okay, I don't understand that. But I know <laughs> I, I'm just submitting myself to you and I'm trusting in you. Even if you offend my mind, if you need offend my doctrine, whatever it is, I, I'm going to trust in you. And so I believe God is wanting each one of you to enter a greater dimension of the prophetic in your life. I love uh, Benny Hinn's book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. Yes. I mean, you just you can just stop there. You don't have to read the book. <laughs> I mean, literally, just. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Okay, well, every morning when you wake up, say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. I like to tell people, it's like, you know, when we had radios and you tune in to, to, to the radio. Well, I, I was like, every morning you say, Good morning, Holy Spirit, and you tune in to His frequency. Holy Ghost 101, whatever it is. And you say, Okay, God, I'm not hearing anything right now. But I'm telling you, I'm tuned into your frequency. So anytime today, you can interrupt me in whatever I'm doing and start talking. And when you start doing that, all of a sudden he starts talking. And it's like, whoa. And now some things you may not expect. Like I remember the first time I prayed for, for the gift of giving. Uh, the next week, the Lord said, okay, go give $100 to this guy. And I'm like, $100? Man, I'm, I'm a resident. I'm $100? And I was like arguing with him. He says, do you want the gift of giving or what? <laughs> okay. So I give them $100 and they're like crying. I'm like, why are you crying? Well, you don't know what this means. I had $300 for rent, but I needed $400. And you just gave the rest. So time and time again, God will surprise you. I mean, Jack Deere has another book, Surprised by the Spirit. You know, so a lot of these, you just get the first page and, and you're good, you know. So it's so important to lean on the Holy Spirit and to, to ask Him um, you know, what to do in your life, what to do every day, no matter where you are. You know, the, the I, I tell people the best mission field 
is the ground between your two feet. Some of that had to settle in a little bit. So wherever you are is your mission field. If you're here in America as an American, this is your mission field. When I go to Nigeria, I'm a missionary. But many of you have come from other countries, but now you're in America. Well, you're a missionary. You may be a doctor, a lawyer, even politician. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Wherever you are, you are a missionary of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And if you lean into the Holy Spirit, it's amazing what will happen as you obey His, His voice in your life. Amen? Amen. I encourage you to read Ecclesiastes 11 and 12 because I believe there's a number of things in there that God wants you to soak in and grasp. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes and he, said, he covers so much in that book. But the last few chapters in particular, he comes down to what, what's really important, right? And he really kind of pulls it all together. Um, I'm reading from the message here in Ecclesiastes 12, 11. And speaking of 11, I don't know if there's anyone here that ever, they, they see numbers repetitively. But there's an 11, 11 number that always comes up either on my phone, on, on you know, there's, there's, it's amazing what the Holy Spirit will do to get your attention. And even in secular dreamology, they say that the number 1111 means you are, are, are destined to do something great. So don't discount things that, that you don't understand. Just, just say, thank you, Lord. Help me to learn a little more about it. And he'll continue to show you <coughs> things that that you can't even imagine. So, uh, in twelve eleven, it says the words of the wise prod us to live well, and that's what I'm trying to do today. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to prod you to live well. Amen. Amen. And the Father is going to prod you to live well through the gift of prophecy. Because it's not my words. Most of you, I, I don't know. I mean, I can't call probably five people's names in here. So it's not because of what I have in my brain. I'm just a conduit. And that's what the gift of prophecy is. I love the definition of prophecy is an impression that we get from God and we communicate it to someone else. Now, Paul makes it real clear in 1 Corinthians 14 that it's to comfort, to exhort, and to uh, edify, build up. So if you, if you prophesy and you're doing those three things, then awesome. Now, occasionally, especially from a five-fold minister, he'll, he'll get into correction, direction, and judgment. But that's pretty rare, okay? And thank God, I, I hate giving those words. But occasionally we do. But for most of the believers, if you prophesy in those three categories, you have a green light to prophesy at the airport, in the marketplace, in your business. As, as some people say, well, we, we want you to prophesy in the church, just don't go out in the parking lot. It's because they couldn't have control, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and of course some people were getting out of whack, right? They were they were given those words of direction and correction and judgment. And it doesn't mean God won't give you those words, but if he does give you those words and you're not seated seated in a fivefold ministry office, then you need to submit that to one of them. Because God may be trying to tell that to the apostle, but the apostle ain't listening. So he needs you to go tell him what God's been telling him the last year to get his attention, right? But for for your friend next to you in church or at Walmart, he's not going to be telling you stuff most of the time about correction, direction, or judgment. And that's where we get off, right? 
But if we just stay with 1 Corinthians 14, Paul did it for a reason. He categorized those things that would build us up, would comfort us, would exhort us to do great things for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So in, in, in this verse 11, it, it talks about living well. And these words are like nails hammered home, holding life together. See, it's, it's words from God, right? We know the Bible is His Word, and that's why it's important for us to read it every day. I heard a statistic that said, if you read the Bible five times a week or more, then everything changes. People who read it just four times a week, they have the same statistics as the world in divorce, marriage, business failure, all kind of different things. But when you hit five times a day, five times a week or more, there's a transformation that takes place. Because you get more of God's word in you. God starts speaking to you. You start following him. And then the rest is history. So it's so important for us to get words through the Bible, through, through godly people, through impressions, dreams, visions, whatever avenue God uses us. And it, it's interesting, this is Old Testament, but it says they are given by God, the one shepherd. And it's just like, okay, well God just gave Revelation to Solomon that Jesus is coming and he's our shepherd, right? And of course he even said that in some of his teachings, that he was a shepherd. And in verse 12, But regarding anything beyond this, dear friend, go easy. There's no end to the publishing of books. I'm not saying that you didn't. <laughs> and constant study wears you out. So you're no good for anything else. That's eating of the tree of knowledge. You know, there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. And God told them not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He wanted to just eat from the tree of life. And he still wants us to do that. He doesn't want us to eat of that tree of knowledge because we get puffed up with pride and we feel like we know everything and we stop going to Him. For some reason, God wants us to be fully dependent on Him. Even though He gave us the tools to do a lot of stuff without Him, which is a dichotomy, right? It's kind of a crazy thing how we, we have to live this life by pursuing things and and the desires that God's given us and pursuing those things, but at the same time, keep checking in with headquarters is what I call it. You know, before you go out and buy that business that you've been praying for for 10 years, just kind of lean into God and the Holy Spirit and maybe a couple of counselors, godly counselors, and say, should I be doing that right now? Because it's amazing, God will give you the direction. And he wants you to, but he's not going to force it on you. He'll let you run out there and make a fool of yourself. And you'll learn something from that. But it's a whole lot better if you check in with headquarters and say, okay, I'm your son, I'm your daughter, should I do this? Now sometimes, because you want to do it so bad, you won't even want to talk to God. Because you have a feeling he might say no. <laughs> And that's a whole other issue, right? But we know that if we trust Him and rely on Him, He will make our way, our path straight. Proverbs 3. And in here He talks, He just throwing in some things that saying, look, don't, don't just do a bunch of stuff without God's direction in your life. And He says, the bottom line is fear God. And fear is not the fear of like shaking fear, although I've been there too. The, the fear is reverential fear. It's like He is the creator of us all. He's our Heavenly Father. He knows best, literally. And why not check in with Him to get our directions? Amen? He said, do what He tells you to do. Boy, that's, you can preach a whole message on that. And that's it, he says. Eventually God will bring everything 
that we do out in the open and judge it according to its hidden intent, whether it's good or evil. And so it's so important that we understand where God wants us to go. Our, my pastor has been preaching it about uh, the your your um, it's like your meditation and the things you do now determine your destination. And the destination that God wants you to be on, even though you may not fully understand what that destination is, if you obey Him, He'll show you the path. And it may not be a straight path. It may be a curve here, or a curve there, and a lot of ups and downs. But to get to your destination, you've got to do things right now and continue to do those things. And we talked about those, you know, reading the Bible, spending time in prayer, loving uh, people around us. Those are kind of no-brainers. But God will, will definitely get your attention and give you the guidance that you need. Amen? Amen. So, like Pierre said, um, if uh, as I minister prophetically over you guys, uh, yeah, have your voice recorder ready on your phone. If you don't have that, you can use the, the camera. The reason is because some of the things I say, you may not understand. And you'll have to pray about them. And then maybe even go to a godly brother or sister in here that that understands the, 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 the gift of prophecy. Because there are things that, even like dreams, when God gives you a dream, that's prophetic. It's an impression you got from God, and now you have it, uh, and you're communicating it, but you don't understand it, you know? So that's when you lean into the God and just say, God, help me understand this. And if he's not giving you understanding, go to someone who can interpret dreams, because they'll give you the understanding that you need. But eventually, if God's giving you a dream, He's going to give you the interpretation. <clears throat> he wants each one of us to, to hear and understand what He's telling us. Amen? Amen? And so if you're husband and wife, let me minister to both of you together, okay? That way uh, it, it becomes a little clearer in my mind because I don't know all things like God does, right? And uh, it just helps that way. So, my brother Joel, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. And, and notice what I'm doing for some of you that haven't seen me before. I'm mentoring how to prophesy. Yeah. Yeah. There are some people who will go, Thus says the Lord God, and shake you and throw coats at you and do all kind of stuff, right? And they'll deliver the right message, but it's done with drama. And what does that drama do? It puts attention on me, not him. So I know there were some people that got called out on that and they stopped it because they realized, oh, you know, God can use that, but most of the time it's getting personal attention, right? And God wants us to be humble servants. Mm -hmm. and, and also when I say I sense something, if he ever senses something different, he can come to me and say, hey, you know, when you said that, I kind of got a check in my spirit or this scripture, and we can, we can talk it out, right? Because we're all submitted one to another. Yep. Paul made it real clear. If there is a prophet, in, let them speak. And if there's not, just let it be, be done, right? But we can judge each other's gifting. And so I do it from a... A, a humble state and 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 then let God do whatever he wants right Amen. so that's how I start I start saying I sense the Lord saying even though I didn't have anything I sensed except that I was going to go to him God highlighted to him first so so that's I, I just obeyed the Lord and I trust the Lord that when I say those words he's going to give me some and he always does and, and the only time that I've, I've kind of hit a wall or something is when people were trying to use the gift uh, as, as something 
uh, that they idolized or something. Mm -hmm. And then God will just give me nothing. And and so, but I, I just, uh, I love to teach as well. And so while I am prophesying, I am mentoring you in how to prophesy. Now, if you've never prophesied before, it's hard to do what I'm doing. <laughs> because your eyes are open, there's a lot of distractions, that kind of thing. So if you start prophesying, it's easier to do it through prayer, prophetic prayer. So when you have an impression to go to someone and maybe exhort them, just say, hey, could I pray for you? And then while you're praying, you get the download and just deliver whatever God says. And then when they open their eyes, they're like, who told you that? God told me, right. So, you know, let, let God do it in his way. Amen? Amen. So Joel and your wife is Ellen. Ellen. I just want to encourage you guys in the Lord. Joel, I see a big heart. I, I just saw a heart that, of compassion that God's given you. A lot of that has to do with pastoral, evangelistic. And I just see you having a love for those who are down and out and handicapped and, and just can't help themselves. And it's like you're connected to the right guy. The guy upstairs got the cattle on a thousand hills. And it's not just a thousand cows. So he's got it all. And I just see him opening up an avenue for you to get increase in finances. To do the outreach that he's called you to do. And it's going to cover several nations. I'm seeing three nations right now. That, that outreach is going to happen. And and even challenging people to give into those outreaches. And I just see God's given you uh, uh, like an engineering mind uh, to strategize and to figure out things and to get things outlined and, and, and orchestrated and, and almost to your detriment. And, and I can see where your wife comes in and helps pull you out of that, that hole sometimes. You know, we get a microscope and we're looking at all the little details and we were missing a big picture. And sometimes we gotta have us pull out from the microscope and look around. Oh, okay, so we're here, you know. So I just see that, that gifting inside of you and I see you writing and drawing and, and doing things through software and different kinds of things. God's gonna to continue to bless you in that as well. And my sister, I just wanna encourage you in the Lord. I just see a prophetic anointing on you I see an intercessory gift. I see uh, an ability for you to to cut through all the riffraff, all the, the coverings and everything, go right to the heart of the matter. And I, I just see a, a strong gift of deliverance. I just see God showing you demons and angels and and uh, it's like he's saying, get ready because you just tip of the iceberg. You're gonna start seeing and thing, feeling things that that you did before, but it's going to start increasing, and it's and it's doing that because God is wanting to use you to set a lot of people free, and there are doors that are closed because those people are demonized, they're influenced by demons, but when God shows you things and you take care of them and take authority over them, and this is kind of a shotgun. I, I tell people, you know, I'm doing a rifle here, but sometimes there's a shotgun. And you get sprayed all through the room. When sometimes I perceive it, sometimes I don't. So if you're feeling like, wow, he's talking to me. Yeah. Guess what? Yeah. He's talking to you. Yeah. He who has ears to hear. Let him hear. Let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not me talking, it's God talking. And God knows how to shorten the prophecies by, by hitting ten people at one time. And then I don't have to say the same thing ten times, right? So God knows, but that that's that's a that's a um, a word for others here that that you should trust the Lord that when there's closed doors, God's going to use your spiritual giftings to to open those doors, and usually it's through the authority that you have in Christ, because every knee has to bow. Amen. Every knee. 
And the ones we have trouble with are the demonic needs, right? The principalities, the powers of darkness. And if we take authority over those, it's amazing how God can have his way. And I just see that in your life, how God's training you to do that and training others as well. Now, are y'all married? Okay. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I just want to encourage you guys as well. I just see uh, a teaching anointing on my sister. I see administrative gifting. I just see um, like a doctoral anointing. I just see healing in your hands. And I see a uh, heart for, for the children, for, for education, for, um, you know, the, equipping them for the work of service. And I just see that that rising up in you is kind of like a generational blessing that has come down through you to get to other people. And I see God opening doors. There's, there's like two doors that he's opening for you. And you're going to go, well, God, I can't handle two doors. I'm just barely doing this one door. And he's going to say, just receive the grace. That's another shotgun in here. Grace is God's ability to do what he's called you to do. You know, the, it's also unmerited favor. We, we got that, right? God gives us that favor. But it's also the ability to do something you couldn't do. So when we get to the end of ourselves and say, God, I can't do this, that's right where he wants you. But he wants you to cry out for the grace because he wants to give you that ability to do both, right? And so I see that grace falling on you to be able to do both and still be able to do all the things that he's called you to do. And Joseph, if you don't mind, guys, when you're in the prophetic, music helps release the prophetic. Okay. And I work with him all the time, so that's why the music is going on. Just so everybody understands. Yeah, and, and especially in churches, a lot of times we'll do worship, and then we'll break and do uh, this offering and that that presentation oh, and everything it cuts the flow yeah, thank you. of what what the holy spirit was already trying to do yeah, yeah. and that's why i was glad when pierre kind of jumped up here and started praying and he's prophetically praying you know it's important that and in some churches what they'll do is they'll do worship and they'll give a little break to do those things and then they'll have one other worship song right before yeah. The minister gets called out and that way the presence of God is re-ushered in the room everyone's focused on him and not their their phone or their wallet or whatever right and uh, so it's true uh, of course that's scriptural right because when the king of Israel uh, needed some direction Jehoshaphat said well let's call for a prophet and he goes they know good prophets around here and so they they called the prophet and the prophet didn't want to prophesy because the king of Israel was evil but he said because of Jehoshaphat call a minstrel so the minstrel came and played the worship of the Lord and he got the word of the Lord and prophesied so those are things we learn in the prophetic and so when you are let's say you're the end of yourself and you, you you're just having a terrible day Put on some worship music and just get in the flow of what what the worship is doing and then ask the Lord whatever you need. It's amazing how he'll start prompting you and, and giving you the, the information that you need. Amen? And Joseph, I just want to encourage you. I just see um, uh, an anointed work ethic. I just see the a business mind. I see the ability to to be the CEO to do things on your own and that's why you've been knocking heads so many times because you you get under someone and you're seeing above them and trying to give input and they don't like it and so you keep on knocking heads here and there well God's opening the door for you you've been it's like you've been praying for like 10 years and it's like here it is here's I see it all coming to a point and I see breakthrough. Amen. And I see as you walk through this, a lot of those connections that you had in those other businesses are going to come to your aid. 
It's it's like they they loved you, they believed in you, and yet you could only go so far. And once you finally break out, they're gonna go, hey, I wanna be on that train. And I see a lot of those people coming to you. You're gonna have to use wisdom because <clears throat> it's kind of like church hopping, you know? You don't want a member from another church to come to your church and offend the pastor. Hmm. But if they come on their own and everything's, they've, they've left that church on good, good grounds, then it's a different story. So I just think that, that you've made a lot of friends that can help you and be part of what God wants to do. Uh, just be careful how it's done so that it's above reproach. Wow, there's an anointing in that. I just, I just, that was a shotgun in here. You know, when you're doing business, you, you have to be careful, especially in a smaller town or community, how you do it, right? It's not that you're doing it, it's how you're doing it. And how you recruit and how you advertise and how you market and do all the things that we do if God wants you to do it His way. And when you do it His way, I'm telling you, He can shortcut two years into two months. Mm -hmm. Because you're His kid. That's right. He can do it anytime. But he, he wants you to do it His way. And when you do it His way, He loves to bless you. Amen. So God's good. So Pierre, while I was um, you know, praying about... Uh, things coming up I got Isaiah 41 and then if you read through that chapter it's a lot about people that have needs and struggles and they need the word of the Lord and they need someone to come up and, and help them and so I believe this place that you're called to is that place and what the Lord is wanting you to do is to focus on the people in need. And don't worry about the building and all this other stuff. Start doing ministry that reaches the need. And as you reach the need, you're going to start seeing the gold, the, the silver, the precious stones start coming out of those people. There's a testimony... There's a testimony of a brother that went to Baltimore and God called him to be a pastor in Baltimore from like Wisconsin or something. He was there, he was getting all excited, you know, because uh, there were some new areas of Baltimore that he could set up a church and he'd go to that one and he says, no, this is not it. This is not it, this is not it. And so God finally brought him down to the project. Hey, this is it. No, God, no. How can I build a church here? Nobody going to give to the church here. And he goes, you do what I tell you. I'll take care of the giving. And so he started a church in, in the roughest part of Baltimore. And um, all of a sudden, some of the people that were getting saved and delivered from alcohol and drugs were coming to his church. And their brother was an NBA player and an MLB player. And they were calling up the pastor and said, hey, can I take you to lunch? And he'd take them to lunch. He goes, I just want to thank you for what you're doing there. there. Man, my brother's on, on a road that he's never been on. And he's in a place where, where I, I need to be. And you're doing it. And you're not getting nothing. He says, I'm going to bless you. And he writes out a check for a million dollars. He says, keep on doing it. And literally, God started bringing people to give to that ministry. And he was literally able to buy blocks in the projects and build apartments, complexes, and put Christian people over them and schools and everything. And it became so attractive that people from these nice neighborhoods were trying to move there so they could get the education <coughs> for their kids. So God's... God's moving, and I, I see him doing something like that, kind of more about the people, not about the place. And as you start doing that consecutive outreach, you're going to start seeing how God's going to bring some of those people that are, are diamonds in the rough. And they're going to start connecting 
in ways that, that are going to really be uh, a ministry of life to you. And I, I see a lot of these other things kind of settling in in the family. It's like, um, it's like someone took a, a bag of flour and just threw it out and there's all this powder everywhere and you can't even see the bag anymore. And it's like, okay, God, we need some answers here and some answers there and really um, just like to get a little more clarification here. And the Lord's saying, trust me, you can't see it, but I see it all. And he says, you just be faithful in what you're doing, and what you're, you're, you're putting your hands to the plow, and I'll take care of all those other things. And that's Matthew 6, 33. But uh, I just see that even in the family, there's healing, there's, there's uh, positions, there's direction that's going to come even in the next few months. And just trust the Lord. Don't have to get anxious about it and, and let other people get anxious. Just, just trust the Lord and say, God, we know there's a river in front of us. And you told us to go to the other side, but nothing's happening. But once you put your foot in that water, God makes a way. So I'll see that happen. Amen? Just a brother behind you. What's your name? Gabriel. Gabriel, I just want to encourage you. I just saw the line of the tribe of Judah. I saw an anointing on you. It's kind of like what Pierre was praying over me, courage and boldness. I see that on you. I see that as a heritage within your family. I see brothers getting close to you that that love the Lord and want to do mighty exploits for the kingdom. They're the mighty men of God. And some of these may be flesh brothers, others Christian brothers. But the Lord's saying he's bringing a group together that can have a major impact. And it's like the, the Spartans, you know, when, whenever they were being attacked, they would all pull up their shield and they would be covered. It would be like one big shield over all of them and none of them would get wounded. I see that same kind of anointing on you to be able to fight the enemy. And when he gets heavy, y'all pull back and pull your shields in so that no one gets injured. And then you follow the leading of the Lord in your life. I believe David's uh, a good mentor in the Bible for you. As you read more of David's life and the things that David did, you're going to get more revelation about what God has for you. Amen? Brother, you? Yeah, instructional prophecy, yes. James. James. Yeah, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I, I see a, a business anointing on you. I see uh, ability for you to go behind the scenes and do things no one else can do. It's a gift. It's natural for you, and you're just saying, well, I'm just doing what I was created to do. Yes, but it's unique in the way that other people have never seen it happen before. And, and I mean, they can put you in the janitor's closet and you can, you can figure out how to get to headquarters. I mean, it's almost like, oh, well, this line goes to the computer, the main computer, and I can tap into the main computer and learn how this and that, whatever happens. And so it's like God's giving you ingenious ideas to jump seasons, to jump seasons. It's like people would have to normally go through six months of training, and in two weeks you can jump that whole season in doing these background kind of uh, ingenuity type things. And I just see you typing, I see you just plugging away, you know, uh, figuring out how to do this and how to do that. And there's, there's two people that are going to be like a catalyst to you. Whenever you get with them, even if it's just to pray, all of a sudden, it's like sparks flying off. This is a shotgun in here. <clears throat> I know there's people, I mean, Pierre's one of them. When we get around each other, it's like sparks flying. We start saying something, and then God says something, and then before we know it, we had a revelation that we'd never heard before. And we're using it till today, you know. And that was like 30 years ago. So, iron sharpens iron. That's a scriptural mentality, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so I see those people coming to you 
And if you will allow them to be that sharp iron in your life and just love on them and, and, and talk to them and pray with them, you're going to start seeing God accelerate things in your life. And so I see that with those two individuals. And just be aware of that and make time for it. And God's going to make the rest of it happen. Amen? Brother Calvin. Calvin. I just want to encourage you, Calvin, I see you as a Barnabas. When I see Barnabas, I see a servant who serves others. But I also see an elder who will go and be part of a board. And everyone will be talking for an hour, and you'll have the answer in one line. And they're like, why did you wait for a whole hour? Well, I didn't have it an hour ago. You know, I had to hear all this stuff, and God had to give me the word, and now I got the word. So uh, that's the anointing of Barnabas. He was able to let all the dust settle and say, oh, this is what you need to do. And I see that anointing in you. Uh, so there's, there's also counsel, godly counsel. And it's not that you've been trained that way per se, but when people come for advice, all of a sudden you've got the answer. And it's because there's a gift inside of you. And that prophetic anointing is available to you. You've only begun to tap into it. Because I see you teaching and prophesying in groups and in the pulpit. So just be aware as people start calling you to do that, all of a sudden God will start beginning to do that in your life. This is a kind of a shotgun. Did you have some? No, uh, no. There's a. Um, if you preach the gospel, probably at least half of you in here are fluent preachers. If they give you the mic, you can take off. And what God wants to do is He wants to do more, just like we sang earlier, right? So let's say you're a good teacher, and God gives you a good outline and teach the Word, and people are like, wow, that's great revelation. And you put the Bible away, and then you go and you let the pastor, you know, invite people that maybe need to say it, salvation or whatever. Well, I'm going to ask you to do more. It's like this brother. When, when you teach the Word of God, whether it's small group or in a big group, I want you to lean on the Holy Spirit and begin to fulfill the call that a prophecy of words of knowledge, of words of wisdom, because those come with the teacher. With the teaching anointing comes those gifts. And if you don't do more, you're leaving people out. There could be three people that would have gotten healed from a terminal illness if you would have just leaned into the Holy Spirit. And it's like, I'm feeling pain in my shoulder right here. Anyone got pain? And all of a sudden, that's a work of knowledge, right? So you, you follow that, and the next thing you know, they get instantly healed. Where they could have had to have surgery the next week. So I believe... God is raising up a lot of you in here to do more. And if you're doing the teaching, do more. Reach out there at the end of your message and say, okay, God, do you have anything? And all of a sudden, it's like things start coming and, and you're going to be able to do more. Praise God. Amen. The sister right there. I just, blessing. Blessing. I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I just see um, a special grace in your life. I see <clears throat> a prophetic anointing. I see uh, it's like God was showing me lasers out of your eyes. So it's like you're able to see like the eagle far off and, and see things that other people can't see. And that's why it's been difficult for you because especially in ministry, you see things two years ahead and people are like worried about two months. And you're trying to get them to look at the two year thing and they're missing it. And, and sometimes they get so frustrated, they just say, just stop talking to me. 
But that's the enemy. The enemy wants to quiet your voice because you have the eyes of an eagle. Mm -hmm. And God's going to use you, even in business, to see two years down the road. And some of these people in here are going to get with you and say, hey, you need to come pray for me in our business because because I can't see that two years. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, we call it putting a demand on the gift. When you... when like you have come today in faith, right? You heard my testimony and what God did. So you came in faith, believed in God was going to use me to speak to you. That's putting a demand on the gift inside of me. And and it's it's so neat. And I love going to Nigeria because it's like a thousand people put the demand on you. And it's like you can't help but do something. And it's it's just... So, so neat. And this group, Dr. Cyril, this group in Frisco has, this chapter has, has begun that. I remember the first time I came, it was just a little bit of, maybe a little bit of faith, a little bit of skepticism, this and that. And now it's like, okay, God's going to show up. We're going to invite everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, this person that's, I don't even know, I'm going to invite them because I know what God will do if we just put them out there, right? And so I see my sister, I see the gift inside of you, and I see God connecting you with other people. I see a prophetic intercessory anointing as well, and I see you connecting with them and really having that as an outlet. You'll still do the business, but you're, this, place, this gifting is what gets your motor going. And when you have that, you're going to start feeling the joy and the peace and all that depression and oppression is going to leave because those are work curses that were put on you because it didn't happen like they wanted. And I release you today. I release you into that gifting and that calling and I break every curse that was on you and I break every curse that was on any of you in this room, Amen. any of your relatives. Amen. I break those curses off of you, Amen. those word curses that Satan used a human person to blow those words over you. I break every one of them right now, Amen. and I speak blessing over you. Amen. I speak uh, a, a future to you, yes. and an and a eye that's clear and an ear that's clear to hear and see what God is doing in your life. Wow, that was so good. And I, I saw stuff go back to Africa and get taken care of. So that's that's pretty cool. His brother in there. Yeah, yeah. Ellery. Ellery, I just want to encourage you. Uh, I don't have to have the mic. No. no. All right. I feel pretty well. I'm going to walk around a little bit. Ellery, I just want to encourage you. And I see a big heart in you, like I was seeing in this brother. I just see that love for people, especially people down and out. It's like you can't help yourself. You just gotta have to help them. And people that know you, when you start going there, you go, okay, here he goes again. You know, it's like that that pull that God uses, that love inside of you to reach other people. And and yes, people have taken advantage of it, but the Lord's pleased with every step you've taken toward those that are unworthy or are down and out. And um, I just see God giving, I just see the pleasure of the Father rolling over you and just just giving you that that commendation to, to keep going in the things of God. And um, the, there's concern you're going to start seeing new things happening. And I, I just see a lot of friendships coming to you I see I mean even like sports and different kinds of things that that you love to do but hadn't really connected with some people God's going to bring you people that you connect with and you're going to enjoy those things and and spend time with the Lord as well praise God it's brother here I just want to encourage you in the Lord I just see uh, a mantle a praise on you I see a prophetic anointing on you I, I see God calling you up to another level. Um, there's there's actually an office of the prophet that God's grooming you to be in. And that's why you've been feeling that tug uh, towards ministry. And and it's like, God, this don't make any sense. I don't 
I don't know. I don't have a template for this. But the Lord says, that's why I'm picking you. Because you don't have a template. You're just going to do what I tell you to do. And people are going to get impacted for the kingdom. And I, I see you doing a lot of writing and blogging and, and internet things. And I just see you reaching out to a unique group of people. And, and it's like, pretty soon, you're going to have a reputation for hitting those people right between the eyes and, and they're going to bow their knee to Jesus. And you're going to have a following of people that say, we need more guys like you in the kingdom so that we can minister to those who are wounded and, and, and distraught and, and don't know where they're going. And I, I just see a, a family anointing on you. I just see an ability for you to counsel some people and speak into their lives and and resurrect a, a godly family uh, that was all shattered. So there's, there's a healing anointing along with that. And as you obey the Lord, you're going to start seeing how all these things come about. And I know in your mind, it's like, God, how can I do that and still do this? Well, you know, I was the same way. It's like I was called when I was in Nigeria to be a prophet. And I was like, okay, I'm going to hang up medicine and be a prophet. Well, I mean, he told you how God used me in the medicine because he, I, I, I view it this way, uh, like a bike, has two pedals, right? We have our ministry pedal and we have our secular uh, pedal. And... God wouldn't release me to do what some people call full-time ministry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm doing it full-time, but I've got two hats, right? Yeah. So um, I see that with you as well. God's going to give you that grace to be able to do both and do them both well. Wow. And it's going to be a, a, um, like a, you're going to mentor others in how to do that. It's going to be... it's. You know, I, I can see it like a fringe. I can call it a fringe ministry or whatever. But it, it's not really, you know, the main church kind of ministry. It's out there, and and God's going to do it. And it's going to be such a need that you're going to have churches coming and saying, hey, can you pray for some of our guys to do that? You know, and, and I see you handing that off, too. Praise God. Is this your daughter? Sorry. Sorry. See you. What's your name? The Darius. The Darius? All right. I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I just see uh, a mantle of praise on you. I just see joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. I just see as a young, I mean, two, three-year-old, God encountering you. And you've mm -hmm. seen things like angels and all kind of stuff. And people were like, is that real? I mean, he's too young for that. And I just see how God's put his finger on you. Yes. And he, he's given you special abilities, even like in sports and different kinds of things. <clears throat> God's going to help you to excel in a way that, that other people only dreamed of. I mean, they would pay to get that kind of anointing. And it just becomes easy for you. And it, it's supposed to be a sign and a wonder so people can follow Jesus. You need to put that in your brain and remember that the reason for you being excellent in things is to glorify Jesus and to, to uh, encourage others to follow Jesus. Amen? Praise God. I see a teaching anointing as well. So you're going to do a lot of writing and, and teaching as well. It's further here. Reinhardt. Reinhardt? Good. Good German name. Right? Yes. So I want to encourage you in the Lord. I, I see you as a mentor to many. I see that you have a lot of experience and God's taking you across a lot of bridges. And it's almost like, well, what do I do? God's putting you in the right place at the right time. And I see several people that are going to connect with you and y'all are all in the same boat. It's like, okay, we're at this page, page of our life, and we want to do something for the kingdom, 
and I've got this tool and you've got that tool and we're going to put it all together and we're going to start seeing God use it for his glory. And I see you connecting with them and really blessing a lot of other people. I see you taking uh, young businessmen and helping mentor them into a place of success where where a lot of them are just have no idea where to go. God's going to help you compile like a work book of, of things that you need to do. And uh, I even see you teaching this like in a seminar or, or uh, some different area that that will bless other people. Are you married? I'm single. Okay. So you're free to do whatever God's called you to do. And it's a whole lot. It's really a whole lot. Praise God. Sister Kendra. Kendra. Yes, sir. I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I just see God's gifted your hands. I see an artistic anointing on you. I see even an ability to dance and to do things that other people can't do and and because of some of those word curses that I broke off you're going to be free to do them now and I just see a love for the king I mean it's like that Mary anointing where all you want to do is just sit at his feet and I just see that 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 glory that comes on you when you do that is for others to enter in so you don't really have to teach it. You just have to do it. And as you do it, other people are going to want to do it. And they're going to come to you and say, how did I do that? How did I do that? Well, you know, uh, this is something you have to, you know, the relationship with Jesus has to be first. And, and yet you're going to help a lot of those people get to that place where they have a Mary Jesus uh, relationship. And they're, they're, do you do things musically? Yeah. Do you do things in music? No. Okay. There is a musical gift inside of you, and it may be untapped. Mm. So I encourage you, as the Lord leads, to to follow His lead. It could be playing the piano. It could be doing some different things with your hands. But I saw. I saw your hands doing something that that brought worship to the king. And so as the Lord opens those doors to you, now notice how I did that. It wasn't real clear to me, so I asked some questions. Um, you know, when, you, when you're in the prophetic sometimes, you get all anxious and just start blurting things out, and it's hard to take it back after you blurted it out, right? Mm -hmm. So it's better, it's better wisdom to ask some questions so that you just don't blurt it out. Because had I blurted it out, he probably would have been confused in <coughs> what I was trying to say. And a prophecy is an impression, right? So we're getting an impression, we're trying to bring it down into words that make sense to the person, right? I mean, to me, well, who cares, right? But to the person, we're trying to make it understandable. And, and some things won't be. You know, we just have to realize that. I've, I had a situation where I prophesied to 35 people in this church. And I got to this young man. And I prophesied how he was going to be a worship leader. And play three instruments. And, um, and so at the end of the service, the pastor's son said, Man, you hit everything on the nail except for that guy. Because that guy can't carry a tune in the bag. <laughs> hey, ain't no way he's going to play three instruments. And be a worship leader? Oh, you missed it. <laughs> well, a year later, I came back to that church, and the pastor brought me from the airport. The first one out of his house was his son. And he came down to the window and literally kneeled down and said, forgive me. For what? You know, because I, I don't keep those things. I mean, yeah, they don't feel good at the time yeah. when someone's telling you you missed it. But, hey, it's him. It's not me, right? So, uh, so he says, I, I don't know if you remember Pop Son to that kid, but but he's now our worship leader and he plays three instruments. <laughs> and he leads worship better than me. 
So he was right out the door to tell me and, and repent for, for not having faith. So, uh, you know, some of these are created, too. That's the part I don't understand. Um, we can say things that are not true right now, but when we say it as thus says the Lord, it's the Lord saying it, so he's creating it. And I, I mean, that kind of blows my mind when that stuff happens. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm glad it wasn't my faith that was speaking, you know. And so that's why I call him Jehovah Sneaky. <laughs> because he uses my mouth to say things I would never say. But then they happen, and it's like, okay, praise God. You can keep doing that. I don't like it, but go ahead, you know, permission granted. So I just see that in you. I see the worship, the, the heart the, uh, of connecting with the Father. Uh, a love for him and a love for his word and and I see you sharing that word with other people and and always have an outlet for that because that's your bread and butter is sharing the word and encouraging people to to love and love God and to love his word. My brother and sister, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. Uh, my sister, I thank you for your worship and your love for the king and and for the, the Jewish people and Israel. And I know you've been praying a lot lately because of all the things going on. And God's heard your prayers and many others. And um, don't think that you're a sore thumb. I saw this sore thumb. And I saw that a lot of people see you as a sore thumb. Like, oh no, here she comes again. She's going to say blah, 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 blah. Well, the Lord says, keep saying blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It's irritating them. It's a sore thumb to them. But they need to hear it. That's right. It's like the flip button and call it action. Wow. Yeah. Well, keep doing it. Keep loving them and I keep loving the Lord. Amen. Amen. So I, I just see that just oozing out of you, the love of the Father, the love for people, and and the the only thing is, especially with family, and this is a shotgun. When you deal with family, you need a harness of the Holy Ghost on your tongue, because you know someone. And you figured out where they're coming from, and you can put your finger right on it and and really wound people, right? And sometimes it's not intentional, it's just because they're being such a petunia that, uh, you know, they needed something to get them straight. But the Lord knows what it takes to get them saved, and those kind of things are not going to help. So that's when the Holy Spirit holds us back. My brother in law came, I don't know where we were living at the time, we lived everywhere, and he came from Holland and I picked him up in the car and he said, I want what you got. And I said, I'll take you to the whole gospel businessman. He didn't speak any English. My sister and my brother came with him and they started praying. And my, my brother in law, I said, right, I said, right. He said, I got it. And he didn't <laughs> say any English, but my brother and sister didn't give it. He did. He didn't understand any English. But he was so in love with the Lord. Praise I God. I call him all the time. I can see him on the That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. It's going to happen to more of you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some of those brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts and uncles, they're coming in. Amen. And it's because the Holy Spirit's going to hold that tongue and say only the things that he tells us to do. Mm. And brother, I just want to encourage you because you encourage a lot of people. <coughs> You don't realize that just your presence is huge. Because you've been walking the walk, you've been believing, you've been pursuing God and, and doing things faithfully. You're an example of our Heavenly Father who's faithful. And I just see God giving you grace all along the way, even through some of these physical issues that you've been having. God's grace is there. Sometimes we, we don't understand why he just doesn't heal it. But 
when he doesn't, he can give grace to make it through so that we can be a sign and a wonder for those around us. And I, I just I just pray that all the pain will go away, that all the discomfort and difficulty will go away, and that you would be able to sustain the level of ministry that God has for you at this time of your life. Amen? It's further here. I just want to encourage you in the Lord. Oh, thank you. Someone knows <laughs> what it takes. <laughs> Sometimes the enemies fight me so much <clears throat> that that I'll get in these coffin spit spells. And I know it's just demonic, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes, naturally, when you've been prophesying for a certain period of time, your voice just needs a little water. Yes. So it's good to just, you know, have some common sense. But there are other times when the devils need to get beat up. And I think that happened in one of our meetings here. I've got to pray now. Because the enemy doesn't want me to continue, so see, y'all gonna have to pray for me to continue. But God's presence here is strong today, man. It's so cool, so cool. So my brother, I just want to um, encourage you. I just heard heard brotherhood. I heard that you have such a heart for the brethren, and it's almost like yes, I mean, full gospel businessmen. Fellowship, right, guys? Your brothers. But it's beyond that. Yes. Yes. It's like God's given you the ability to see that guy out there that's lost like a goose, and you see him as your brother. Mm -hmm. It's it's so there's a, a phrase I use um, that God God you know, John 3, 16. He wants all the world to get saved, right? Mm -hmm. But knowing that there's some people who will reject him in spite of hearing the gospel. But our part is to believe that first part, that everyone will get saved. So we start calling that lost one as our brother. We start acting like that guy's our brother. And then all of a sudden, the love of the Father that comes through us to them brings them to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. And I see that anointing in you. I see that. I see that ability to teach it. So I see there's a teaching anointing. I see God giving you the tools you need. So those weapons of warfare to take down the principalities and powers of darkness, to use the word of God whenever you need to, to break through. I see prophecy, words of knowledge and wisdom. They're, they're in you and they want to be expressed more. And usually what that takes is a platform. Like right here, I've got a platform, right? Um, usually when I work in the ER, I have a limited platform. My platform there is to practice medicine and to do good medicine. And occasionally I'll pray. But the gift of prophecy is not the biggest platform for that. But anytime you have an opportunity to teach the Word of God, make sure that that platform gives you that ability to express those gifts. And we have not because we ask not. You know, all we need to do is ask the Lord. If we've never moved in the gift of prophecy, He said ask. In verse 3, 10, 14, he says, earnestly desire it. And that's what I, I'm sensing in this room. And in you guys, since I've been coming, you get a little taste, a little taste, and I want more, I want more, you know. And so uh, God's bringing the more. But we got to keep asking him on those platforms, one, to be on the, on the platform. God, give me a platform. And then when you're on the platform, the grace to... to I hate to say perform, but basically that's what it is. You're, you're expressing your faith through the gifts and allowing the Lord to, to give us those words. 
I just had an impression that someone had a question about that. Anyone, you have a question about maybe how to do that or the gifts? If you do, then later raise your hand and and just ask it. Because, you know, that's when you talk about counseling and stuff like that, <clears throat> it's good to ask questions. <coughs> Because you can talk all day and not understand where they're coming from. But one question can clarify everything. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Is mm -hmm. further here? Judy. Judy. Judy? Yes. Okay. Different than Judy. <laughs> Sebo, that's what I know. <laughs> and God something. Chuku, go Zeke. Ebo. Yeah. So true day. I just want to encourage you today. I see a teaching anointing on you. I see an evangelistic anointing on you. I see God using your hands to bring healing and on people. I see you laying hands on the sick. I see them recovering. I see insight and understanding beyond your years. I see God imparting to you things that it's like some nights you're just writing and writing and writing or typing and typing and typing. And I just see all this stuff coming out of you. And it's like after you finish, it's like, okay, God, what do I do with that? <laughs> and that's a good question because he's given it to you to share with other people. And the avenue that you share it in is the key. <clears throat> and I see God getting you to a place where you uh, can do that more. And I see um, doors opening to you. Even in the next few months, I just see God giving you those opportunities uh, in outreaches and different things God's going to use you, even maybe going door to door and praying with people. God's going to give you that ability to pray and believe. And I see people getting saved, people getting delivered and healed. And God's good. Amen. 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 My sister, are you married to him? Yeah. All right. What's y'all's name? Give up. Give up. Amen. Amen. All right. I just want to encourage you guys. I just see <clears throat> a special grace on you and your family. I see where the enemies try to take you out multiple times. And, and really try to wedge a wedge in the family to keep the enemy in charge. But I see that your prayers are prevailing. I see God overwhelming some people who were in the, den the enemy's camp and they were being used in witchcraft and all kinds of different things. And I see God, it's like he pulled the rug out from under you. And where they had a platform before, now they don't have it. And now they don't know what to do because they used to be somebody and now they're really not anybody if they don't have that kind of juju on their side. And God's working on that individual in particular because He knows once they come to the Lord and start moving in the things of God, so many more are going to follow. And I just, he, I just hear the Lord saying, I've bottled up your prayers in heaven and I'm ready to pour them out. Amen. And... Um, don't try to figure it out because God's ways are higher than our ways, right? And just trust that He's got it all in His hand. And it's going to be a tremendous testimony to see how it... And even before this individual comes to the Lord, some others are going to start coming in because He doesn't have the control over them. And I just see this, this, this amazing revival taking place 
in you in your guys in y'all's family, extended family, in the next few years. Amen. Amen. So continue to hold strong to the things of God and pursue Him. And my sister, I just see a, a prophetic intercessory anointing on you to pray even for governments, nations, and, and government groups. <clears throat> I see you connecting with other people, kind of like the Wailing Women kind of thing. And I just see uh, you being faithful to do what God's called you to do. <clears throat> I just see a healing coming over you. And I see a shield that God's putting over you to protect you from the darts of the enemy. Because he doesn't want you alive. He doesn't want you alive. That's why he's tried to take you out several times. It's, it's because God and the devil both know what kind of tools he's giving you to overcome the enemy on this earth. So keep pursuing it and, and encouraging others to as well. And my brother, I just want to encourage you. I, I just see God's giving you the ability to judge right from wrong. Especially like when you're hiring people. If someone walks through the door, it's like, uh-uh, not this one. You'll listen and hear them out, but it's like, no way. They're not, they're not even coming, you know, past go. And I, I just see God giving you the ability to discern that. Even in ministers. Ministers be you know, real fancy and getting all this stuff and he's like, uh uh, there's something wrong there. And it's 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 a gift that God's given you, it's discerning of spirits. And God's given you that ability to discern. It doesn't mean that they're lost. It means that they're not running on all cylinders per se. And you need to pray and intercede for them. <clears throat> because what usually happens in those situations, especially if they're, they're quoting Christianese, when you start praying for them, all of a sudden everything gets worse in their life. And everything falls apart until they get to the place where they can look back up to Jesus and repent and start moving on. But God uses people like you to get them there. And uh, keep pressing in. Amen? Amen. This brother here for y'all. Okay. Your name? Pierre is laughing because he knew. He said, when I say that, I mean God has divinely appointed you to be here today. Are y'all recording this? Yeah, you need to. I mean, you know, I know it in my spirit. I have no words in my head. I just know it. And that's why I'm saying it. And. I'm expecting God to really speak to you guys. Amen? Amen. And Stephen, right? I just want to encourage you. I, I just see... I just see all the enemy through at you to keep you from coming to Christ. I don't know how the enemy knows this, but when, when we have a call on our life that's huge... Man, the enemy throws everything he can to knock you out. And he's still trying to dissuade you. And because in some areas you were in his camp, he keeps on trying to claim you. But the Lord says today, that's being severed right now. I just saw the sword of the Lord severing that attachment, every attachment of the enemy. I just see all those those excess baggages we call them. They're being cut off of you. And that ball and chain is being broken off of you. Man, you these next two years, oh my goodness. These next two years are going to be, I mean, they're going to be fun. They're going to be fruitful. They're going to be out of this world. Because God has a heart of revival in both of you guys. And you've known it since you were a kid. Didn't know how to explain it. But now you know every time you get around people that have revival in their heart, they're like, that's us. Mm -hmm. And and I, I 
I mean, he's mentioned in the youth. That's just the beginning. Because mm -hmm. after that, every youth has a parent. Mm -hmm. Every yes. youth has a brother. Mm -hmm. Every youth has a grandfather. <clears throat> and you're going to speak into their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's the dual language. You need it. Because you're going to be able to flow from one to the other. Wow. And, and I don't know if you've been an interpreter for, before, but I see that anointing on you as well. Mm -hmm. To interpret both from English to Spanish and Spanish to English. And and it's like, because of that, you almost like, man, I think I got some of their anointing on me. Yeah. Well, guess what? You got some of their anointing on you. You know, the, godly interpreters, when they're conduits, they can literally get the anointing of that minister on them and begin to minister through it. And that's why you have an edge against others that have not done that. And um, But that's going to be a side thing. Okay, every now and then, some man of God's going to call you, uh, I only want him to interpret for me. So, okay. so you make time for that. Um, but, but your focus is more on ministering to others, and especially training leaders. I just see you going to universities and training leaders to do like revival services on their campus and and even going into Mexico and other countries and and getting the the college students, um, even high school students really fired up about the things of God. And and it doesn't make sense right now how to do it, but God's gonna make a way. Amen. And I just see he's protecting you. I see several angels that he's putting on watch for you mm. and the things that, that you're going to do. Mm. And, and I just see a board that's being developed that's going to support you. Mm. Thick or thin, they're going to like, we're behind you. And some of them have political power. Mm. And they're going to be able to open doors for you. No one could open. Mm. And it's going to be so cool because they're not going to take any credit for it. And you're going to be able to go in here and go in there. And they're like, how do you do this? Nobody does this. Well, God's on my side. And I just see God working through all the details. And it's like God's given you certain political people to, to intercede for. <clears throat> and you're going to be their kind of closet intercessor. Because they don't have nobody to share some of the things you're going through. And, and um, God's going to wake you up in the middle of the night and say, you need to write this down and give this to so-and-so. And some of these people are like, I don't even know them. Just do it. And you're going to find a way and get it to them, and you're going to have an audience with people that that God has called you to support. And that's going to be so cool. And my sister, you, you're not just coming along for the ride. Okay? I just see a, a, a musical yes. anointing on you. I see uh, drama anointing on you. I see the ability to do videos and production. And and when you see someone like playing the guitar, you're like, oh, they're one of those minstrels. And I just see you have that ability to just go find them and put them in the right place and and get them to, to use their gift and calling and at the same time establish them, disciple them, so they don't go out the deep end. Because we've seen that so many times. Someone gifted, worshiper, and then all of a sudden they're in the enemy's camp doing their thing. And I just see how God is orchestrating things for you to do both and be a blessing to them. Thank you. Oh, God's so good. God's so good. God's so good. He's, he's using your family. I, I just see this, this like troop of your family that, you know, some of them are, are kicking and kicking against it, but they have no choice. They're part of the troop. It's a Holy Ghost troop that God has designed and brought together and there's going to be a lot of traveling and unique ways to do that. Um, but 
each one of them has a gift and a calling. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if you you haven't watched the movie Unsung Hero, it's about King Country and how they came over here. And they are that truth, and I see the same anointing on you guys and your family, and uh, how God's using all of you in different ways to, to promote the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Y'all reach out hands through this couple. I just feel like we need to bless them <clears throat> as a group, as a chapter. Father, I thank you for this couple, Stephen and Elizabeth. I thank you for their future. Lord, I say open up the windows of heaven and bring down the resources that they need, both material resources and relationship resources. <clears throat> we thank you for what you've already done. Now, Lord, do the more. Do the more. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're going to hear a lot of good testimonies there. Amen. Now, y'all are there? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's your Albert. I'll get you next. No, she's not. Good question. So, Father, I just thank you for my brother. Um, I thank you for Albert. I just thank you for his life. Um, it's a miracle that you're here. Um, it's like a second life. It's like you had your life and you lived it, and now you're in your second life. And the Lord says he loves that about you. You're willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And I see you really connecting with other pastors who are down and out right now. And there's a lot of them. And I see the Lord leading you to them, taking them out to coffee or lunch or whatever, and just speaking into their life and say, look, if nothing else, I'm going to be your intercessor. But I have a lot of water in the bridge. And I can help you. And I just see God using you to help some of them. Some of them have to transition out of ministry because they've gotten off track. But the Lord's going to use you to help them do that and even get someone else in to ministries. And there may be some that need to close, but God's going to give you the wisdom in how to do that. And that's an apostolic anointing that's on you. Uh, it may not have been there before, but it's sure right there now. And I just encourage you to keep pressing in to the things of God and, and listening to the voice of the Lord because He's going to use you powerfully in the days ahead. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sister, what's your name? Uh, it's Yes. I just encourage you in the Lord. I just see um, new things, new horizons, new adventures. I see you doing a lot of traveling. I see you carrying a bag with you with all kind of goodies. And I just see, like, oh, I'm going to share this and I'm going to share that. And the Lord has so many things that you need more focus. It's like when you have a hundred things that you can do, God's saying, okay, right now we're going to hone in on these ten. And I see the Lord doing that for you. In the next few months, as you press into it, even write them down. And this is good for other people, too. Yes. When you get to a place where you, there's so many things, that, so many directions, so many things you could do. Good things. And yet, there are things, right? Yes. You need to start writing them down. Write them down, and then ask the Lord, okay, what are the things I need to do? And in the next few months, you're going to see, He's going to highlight those ten. Those others are good things, but they're a distraction to you. And you need to put that in your brain. Because some of those people will still be calling you. Oh, can you do this? Can you do this? No, I can't do it anymore. God told me to focus more on this. And you can tell them. Focus more on this. And, and I just see education. I see wisdom. I see degrees. I see all kinds of stuff that the Lord's putting you in. Professorship. I just see like several universities that you're going to be you know, involved in. 
and and moved up to administrative type stuff and you're going to have a lot of say uh, and some people are not going to be happy but uh but god says i put you on that watch i put you like an esther in a heathen king's nation to be able to speak the truth and to guide people and the lord says don't hold back don't hold back i've got your back you're, you know, the enemy wants you to say, oh, I'm going to get you. No, he can't get you. You've got angels surrounding you. You've got, you've got the Lord himself protecting you. And I, I just see how these things are all going to start falling in place. And, and it's the critical time. It's a critical time. This, this fall, everything starts. <clears throat> I mean, from August on, so many things are going to happen. And and it's going to be exciting, and it's going to there are going to be some close calls, but but you'll always get away. God always makes a way of escape. Yeah. He always He always makes a way of escape. Even though the door shuts, the window's going to be open. Amen. He's going to make a way of escape. And I, I just see God using you in a powerful <coughs> way. And I mean, some of it's political. And, and I know some of us don't like politics, but it's inevitable. It's the government, right? And, and they're going to want you to do this. And God's going to say, no, do this. And you're going to knock heads. And God's going to have his way. And, and those people will one day bow their knee and say, God has definitely showed you something. And now I'm literally believing it. Because the truth is the truth. Amen? Yes. Praise God. His brother there. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I see I see you as a heavy. That means you're covering a lot of people. A lot of people depend on you to get sustenance. It can be spiritual, physical, whatever. And the Lord is giving you that ability to get the resources. And um, some people have said, you're spending too much time doing that. No, that's your job. That's your job. And I just see God giving you like, like a catalyst increases things to do it better and quicker. I see God giving you that. It's like delivering you the goods to do to get the resources quicker and to a higher level. And I, I see you querying things with the Lord and the Lord making it clear to you. It's like you don't have to, to wonder anymore. Before it's like, well, God, I don't know. I should be helping them, but, you know, something in me says I shouldn't. Make it clear. He's going to start making it clear. And, and it's going to be very easy to say no. Where before it was like, no way. I've got to give. You get pulled and then you give. And that's a problem that givers have. If you have a giving gift, anyone <coughs> with a need comes to you, you just give. It's part of that gift. But the Lord showed it to me this way. If you don't have a harness on that gift, it's like having a purse, God put money in there, and having a hole in the bottom, just falling out. Because when Satan finds out you're a giver, he'll send his people over there to get resources that you could use for someone else. That's true. And it's just like that hole. But if you check in with headquarters, it's like sewing up that hole in that purse so that you always have enough for you and your family. That's one thing, I, a revelation that came to me. That if you or your family is suffering because of your giving, you have overstepped your bounds. You've let the gift run wild. But the Lord wants a harness, a Holy Ghost harness, not your harness, but Holy Ghost harness on that gift. <clears throat> and when you do that, you'll always have enough and more to give to others. Amen? Amen. Brother Cyril, can you break it? Right, Richard.
God's good. Yeah, all the time we say, right? Yes. Pack your bags. I see you traveling. I do. I hear someone wanted to give me an appointment. It's a big appointment. And I think the Lord's already kind of shown you um, something was coming down the line. And it's like, God, are you serious? And he's serious. And I, I see this appointment coming and God using you in a powerful way to do things that couldn't be done otherwise. And he's been training you here. He's been training you here to just submit to whatever he wants you to do. And you've been faithful to do that. And as you've been faithful, you'll have to keep doing that. And, and I, I just see so many doorways opening because of your obedience and your faithfulness. And, um, you know, sometimes, especially in political appointments, we sometimes don't want to be involved in those because sometimes the person that's doing it is a demon. Um, but when God puts a Mordecai in a, in a secular kingdom, he's doing it there for a reason. Yeah. And I kind of see you as a Mordecai being placed in a place that wouldn't be the best place for a Christian, but God's going to use you in a powerful way uh, to, to, to help. And there's a lot of help. A lot of help. Uh, sister, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I just see you, I see you with a whip, whip in your hand. And I see you like looking around and saying, what are you doing there? And I see, I see you getting people into place. It's like a corral. You know, when you got a bunch of horses, you need to corral the horses. And if you don't corral them, they'll run wild. And I just see these wild people around you and you're going to have the will to get them into the corral because they need to be trained and just like a horse needs to be broken some people need to be broken before they can do the power of God in their life and I just see a network anointing on you I see you with the ability to go behind the scenes and talk to people and counsel people and and get in and get out and kind of hardly be noticed and yet a lot of fruit is coming out of it all and um, wow <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> oh my goodness this is awesome let's reach our hands to this couple because another powerful assignment from the Lord <clears throat> Father I just thank you Lord for my, my brother Cyril and Bridget Lord I thank you for their lives and their ministry Lord we tear down everything the enemy has held against them and Lord we release all the funds all the blessings that you had intended for them to have we release them to them right now. Amen. And we break off every curse, every cultic power that was holding back these resources. We bind them and we break them. And we say release them even now. That sevenfold return is coming now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In a year from now, you're going to come and give your testimony in this chapter. It's going to be powerful. And it's going to be so encouraging to so many people. And I see you connecting to two different churches and, and kind of staying in between. Because sometimes when you get buttonholed with a denomination, they say, oh, well, they're just blah, blah, blah. But the Lord's going to bring you close to two kind of denominations 
and you're going to be close to leaders, but not necessarily called the labor, got the labor, right? And uh, it's going to be really exciting to hear all the good things that are coming down the pike. Amen? Amen. My sister here. Constance. Constance. I just want to encourage you in the Lord, and I just see uh, God uh, causing you to run after Him. I see a lot of things in your hands, and some of these packages are on special delivery, and some of them are just there for whoever needs it. And I see resources coming to you, and and where before it's like everything you did didn't seem to materialize. In this next year, you're going to do just a little bit, and something's going to materialize. And we'll go. Well, why is that happening now? It's because it's God's timing. And that's a general thread that's going through all of us today. That God's timing is coming to pass. Amen. So we are walking into God's timing. It's Kairos. It's a Kairos time. Where God has orchestrated us to be doing what we're doing and not just be learning what we're learning. And, and surviving, right? Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to prosper. <laughs> and I see that happening in your life. Mm -hmm. I see you traveling a lot too. And I see you connecting with people that wouldn't connect with you before. Mm -hmm. And I, I just see you bearing gifts mm -hmm. and, and parcels. And I, I see the favor of the Lord on you to do things that, that other people couldn't do. In fact, people will be coming to you. Show me how. Show me how. And point to the Bible and say, "Start there." And you will have some that will start there. Others will leave because they want a quick fix. They want a shortcut, and there ain't no shortcut. Like forty years of training. Now is the time. And I just see God working out all those details and and tying up loose ends. And it's like the Lord's telling me, don't worry about the past. <clears throat> the enemy wants you to worry about the past because it'll stop you from getting to your destination. But if you don't worry about the past, you can make it to the destination and you'll probably not even have any issue. And even if there is an issue, the Lord's going to take care of it. So... You know, that's another thing. Trust in the Lord, right? We've got to trust in the Lord. It's a walk of faith. And when we walk in faith, it pleases the Father, and we'll see a great a great result and a great return. Amen. My brother. Yeah. Douglas, I just want to encourage you in the Lord. I just see you encouraging others right now. It's like... There's administrative gifting and things like that that you have, but the Lord really has you focusing on encouraging other people, getting into their story. What are they doing? What are they going to do? It's like probing. It's kind of stirring up the fire inside of them, like Paul did for Timothy. It's like, look, we don't you have a gift in this area? Why aren't you doing that? And I just see the prophetic increasing in your life to be able to discern what to say at the right time and and I, I just see that joy coming every time it happens whether it's at Walmart or whether it's in a big conference uh, to one of the key speakers it's the same joy and I just see that joy overflowing you and overflowing into other people I see you laying hands on the young ones in the faith and imparting giftings and callings and, and I, I just see great things taking place in these next few years as you just step out and be a blessing to those people I see a, a, a strong intercessory gift inside of you to pray and I see you encouraging other people to do that as well and we just thank you for that thank you Lord and Father, I just thank you for full gospel. I thank you for the ministry of Demas Shakarian. Lord, I thank you for 
it, the vision you gave him is still going on. And it's happening even today. And I thank you for all those that have plugged into this chapter and have been a part of this, this outreach. I pray that you bless them and their family and their businesses. Continue to give them insight and revelation so that every one of them can be a minister right where they are. That ground between their two feet. We just thank you that you're propelling full gospel to another level. Even this convention they're having in, in uh, July, Lord bless it. Cause the speakers to speak the right things. Yes. Cause people to grab even mantles of ministry and, and be propelled into a greater way and a greater um, avenue of your goodness and mercy. We give you all the glory and honor, Father. Pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.